Hi, everyone. My name is Jin Yeon Chu, and I am an assistant professor at the University of Hong Kong. In this talk, I will introduce our new phase field method for frictional cracks and interfaces. As many of you know, the phase field method has emerged as an efficient approach to simulate fracture propagation. So what is phase field modeling? I consider a standard solid mechanics problem with a discontinuity or a crack like this. Uh, the classic way to model such a crack is to view it as a line, but it requires an algorithm for tracking crack geometry. And such an algorithm can be quite complex when the geometry is evolving by fracturing process. Phase field modeling has been developed to address this issue efficiently. Here is the key idea of phase field method. Let us introduce a field variable denoted by D here, which ranges from zero to one. This field is called phase field and it represents the crack region where its value is one and the intact undamaged region where its value is zero. So in this way, the line crack is now smeared in the domain without any mathematical expression. So the upshot of this method is that it does not need any algorithm for tracking crack geometry. So this allows us to simulate complex fracture patterns without any algorithm. Here is an example from Borden et al. in 2016, where the phase field method is used to simulate such complex cracking patterns without any algorithm for tracking crack geometry. In geomechanics, however, we often encounter cracks and interfaces with frictional contact, such as forge, joints, slip surface. These interfaces are in underground, so they are subject to confining pressure, so they are often closed with frictional contact. And the mechanical behavior of such frictional interfaces are very important in many problems in geomechanics. So the motivational question of this work is, can we use the phase field method for cracks and interfaces with frictional contact? Motivated by this question, we have developed a phase field method for frictional interfaces, which is now published in IGNME in 2020. Here is the key idea of our phase field method. We first identify that the phase field approximate domain has two end regions. The first one is the bulk region where the phase field variable is zero. And the other is the interface region where the phase field variable is one. In standard phase field model for open fracture, this interface region is zero, but for closed crack, this interface region allows stress and the stress, which we call sigma interface can be calculated in an interface oriented coordinate system like this. Then we can calculate the overall stress tensor as a weighted average of the stress in the Burke region, sigma Burke and the interface stress with the weights calculated from the degradation function denoted by GD. So here, the second term on the right-hand side is new in our method because this is zero in standard phase field modeling. Then how can we calculate the bulk and interface stresses? Uh, the bulk stress should be the same as the standard continuum constitutive law, such as linear elasticity, but the interface stress should be calculated depending on the contact condition. There are three contact conditions. The first one is open condition, and in this case, the interface stress should be zero because interface is an empty space. In this case, the model corresponds to the standard phase field model for open fracture. And the second case is the stick condition. And in this case, the interface stress is equal to the Burke stress, such that the overall material behave as an undamaged or intact material. But the most interesting condition is the slip condition where there's a sliding inside the interface. In this case, we calculate the stress tensor, which denoted by sigma slip, as a sum of sigma friction and sigma no penetration. And here, sigma friction can be calculated by a standard slip constitutive law, such as the Coulomb law, whereas the sigma no penetration is compatible with 
the bulk strength such that the no penetration constraint can be satisfied. The upshot of this approach is that we can satisfy the no penetration constraint without any algorithm, such as Lagrange multiplier, the penalty method, or the augmented Lagrange method. Here are some verification examples of the proposed method. Uh, the first example is adopted from Dolbo et al., which was later used by many studies such as Ru and Borja and Anna Barapu et al. In this problem, a square domain containing a frictional crack is compressed from the upper boundary. Our phase field method diffusely approximates the internal crack using the phase field variable. And here we approximate the crack using different length parameters. So when we use the length parameter of 0 0.008 meter, the crack is modeled rather bluntly like this. And as we decrease the length parameter, you can see that the crack becomes sharper and sharper. Here is the results of this problem simulated by XPAN by Anna Barapu et al. And here is the results by our phase field method. And you can see that these results are nearly identical verifying the phase field approach. We have tested this example with different length parameter values, as I shown earlier. Then you can see that the results converge as the length parameter becomes smaller, but you can see that the rather blunt approximation also works quite well. And we tested the main mesh sensitivity with a fixed L value. And you can see that our results show very little sensitivity to the mesh refinement. And also the results converge well. Our second verification example is another benchmark example from Oden and Pires, which was later used by many other studies such as Rigor Settel and Seymour and Larson. In this problem, a rectangular elastic domain on a rigid block is compressed and pulled. And this is an interesting problem because slip and stick contact conditions are mixed along the interface, which is denoted by red line in the figure on the right-hand side. This is the deformed shape of the problem simulated by the classical finite element method. And here is our phase field results. And you can see that uh, these two results look very similar. And indeed, they are nearly identical, as you can see now. And then we compare the contact normal pressure and tangential stress calculated by phase field and classical method. You can see that our phase field results show very good agreement with the classical results. But please note that the phase field method does not need any algorithm for the contact constraint. So this is a huge advantage in terms of implementation. Lastly, I'd like to show why is frictional contact is important. For this purpose, I'd like to show a crack propagation example. So now the phase field variable is allowed to evolve according to brittle fracture theory. In other words, a standard phase field model is modified to include our contact formulations. So crack driving force is shear strain energy and the crack resistance is the shear fracture energy. We will particularly simulate a rectangular block with a pre-existing crack as shown in the figure on the right, right hand side. And this will be compressed from the top boundary such that the crack will evolve. Here is the simulation result. As you can see, the crack propagates to the right boundary and the specimen will fail. On the right hand side, I showed load displacement curve. And then as you can see, the load displacement curve changed with friction coefficient mu. And then we compare our contact formulation results with the one obtained by a popular volumetric debitric decomposition method. And here is the result. You can see that when we use the volumetric debitric decomposition method in which the frictional contact is not physically treated, you see that there's some unrealistic crack kinking in the phase field simulation results. So this means that proper treatment of frictional contact is very important for modeling frictional crack in phase field method. Here are some closing remarks. 
we have developed the first phase field formulation for cracks and interface with frictional contact. And the key idea is to decompose the stress based on contact condition identified in an interface oriented coordinate system. And the proposed method has two main advantages. And the first one is that it does not need any algorithm for geometry. And this is a common in every phase field method, but the proposed method has another distinct advantage that it does not need any algorithm for the contact constraint. So because tre treatment of contact constraint is a significant problem in co computational contact mechanics, we believe that our phase field method is very appealing. More details of the method can be found in this paper, IGNME. Because this talk was originally submitted to EMI 2020 last year, so actually extensions of the present work have already been published in CMAME. So if you are interested in this work, so I, I, I recommend that you have a, you take a look at these papers. Thank you for your attention.